Vlogs. Welcome back to another First Division show. Delighted to welcome Sean Lean and Keith Ryan onto the show. Guys, what's the crack? You well? How are you? Yeah, well. You're well this week, Sean. We'll start off with that flow to Waterford to finish that flow 10 0. Waterford won. Griffin's goal after 15 minutes, a very good free kick. Um, what's interesting, Sean, this week, we spoke last week about how you know Waterford has been playing a lot of their new players, especially in the midfield area. But for this one, Griffin and Akeem came back in. He must have been listening, Sean. Yeah, he must have been. Um, that's, I still think it was poor, though. I mean, the the only great moment of the game we had was was that was that Shane Griffin going. He was man of the match in my opinion. He he tired as the game went on. All right, he didn't last the full ninety. He was out there for a full ninety minutes, but he didn't last the course. But um, he played some good stuff. We really should have had uh, a few more goals. I thought it was a poor performance towards the end. We were really hanging on, and for the whole second half, we were time wasting. and that was really poor. Uh, a few new players came into the team. All right, Ronan Coughlin came in. On the wing in, in place of Con Clark, and in my opinion, he did he did a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, he was good for about sixty minutes, and um, he there was a foul he had on an Athlone player, and he was on a yellow card. It really should have been a second booking, and um, he was taken off after that. So um, you know, there the really wasn't a whole lot. The three points is massive because with Galway winning this week and with Cove winning as well, that um, you know it's important we kept pace. But uh, it really it it doesn't put to bed any concerns. Uh, I had about the team. I mean, you know, we 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 just looked like it was really bad. I mean, we're hanging on against that loan, and no disrespect to that loan, like, but they weren't great either. You know, you're judging you're judging them on the basis of how they played, and judging us on the basis of how we played. Like, it was a very poor game of football overall. And uh, I don't, I'm not filled with confidence in heading into next week. Um, you know, unless things drastically change. Are you on? Hang on, you went on me there. <laughs> you just went, it kind of went, like, you know where you go really slow, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, keep so, uh, we're not confident going into next week, Sean, no? No, I'm not confident going into next week. I mean, it was really, I mean, there's just, I don't think that there's going to be enough change in the space of time between now and next Friday mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we're going to at least perform well. If we do get in, it'll be a miracle. Mm -hmm. Keith, I mean, it's still an important three points for Watford, especially with Galway winning, just to get the three points. Sean says I've been playing well, but maybe that'll be a flat form. Just, you know, get the three points any way you can. It sounds like I've loaned, they put them under pressure for the last number of minutes in the game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, the highlights were a bit sparse, so uh, mm. didn't see much of it. Like, uh, um, look, it was a, it was a. You can say it was a fantastic free kick, but um, maybe Andy Manolo would be a little bit disappointed. It was it was far enough out to, um, but like top corner was um, it was a. Uh, you can say it was a good goal, but you can also say maybe Andy would be a bit disappointed with it. Um, but you're right. Uh, they need to keep on the coattails of of Galway and uh, to get these one 0 wins, you know. Um, but hook by crook, um, you need to get results, and they did on a plastic pitch. Impressive enough, one 0 away. You know, at loan, um, they kind of have hit a bit of a a soft spot, haven't they? The first two wins, and then they've they've gone two games without a win now. So, um, as I said, uh, week on week, it's very early on. But uh, you know, if I was a Waterford fan, even though they're not getting the performances. It's fantastic to get three points on the road. I think so. Um, we'll stay with you, Keith. Ray Wonder was there long for town nil, and uh, you were obviously at this one. But uh, from what I can see, the highlights were very sparse in this one. It looks like they can't see each other out with Bray, maybe slightly better. Yeah, yeah. Bray were a little bit better uh, than Longford. Um, this game be remembered more for refereeing. Um, was five bookings in the first half and there was another four bookings in the second half and it wasn't that type of game. It was just the 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 the, the fouls that were given were so soft um, and then he felt he had to be the centre of attention and um, it's it's so inconsistent, the, the inconsistency in the league uh, with refereeing. I hate, I hate lashing referees but, you know, when you have little fouls, little niggles and you're given a booking for it and two of them were very early on as well for Longford so, um, you know it's it's not good. Cool. Jake Walker hit the post for Bray with an overhead kick, um, near the near the last few minutes, which would have won the game. I'm not sure if Jack Brady got touch on it, um, but 
you know, it's it's disappointing on on, on Bray's side um, that you haven't scored at home and, you know, it, it probably goes down as two points dropped given they had the better chances, although the chances were few and far between. Um, Bray were missing Chris Lyons and Jared Short um, from from the first few weeks of the season and obviously Darren Craven and Dave Webster are long term absentees. So um Ian Ryan be hoping to get them uh, at, at least Jared Short and Chris Chris Lyons back for the for the war for game on Saturday. Yeah, Sean, I mean it's obviously a decent enough point in the road for Longford, but they still haven't won in four games. Uh, one defeat and that was in the opening day against Athlone. Um, hard to judge Longford. Although they've been hard to beat in the games aside from Athlone, they obviously drew a water as well. Yeah, that seems to be the way with them that they're really hard to break down. They've got three draws now, mm. um, two of them on the road, and um, you know they've really been tough to break down. Jack Brady's a huge part of that, a very important signing for them. Um, I would have expected the opposite to be honest. I'm kind of surprised that they haven't been scoring more with uh, McGarrison. Daryl Lynch did get injured, which was unfortunate for them, and probably impacted how they scored a bit. And Sam Verdon leaving the club uh, kind of helped either. But um, I, I would have expected the opposite of them. It's a bit surprising, to be honest. But um, they are proving to be a tough team to break down. Mm, just heat on on uh, performances going forward for Longford. I thought Jamal Abraham doing a pretty good job for them up top. Um, he was quite isolated for much of the night. But, you know, he gave Dane Massey and uh, Cole um, a, a bit of work to do, you know. So, um, he he on gets- the channels, doesn't he, Keith? Sorry, yeah, you. yeah, absolutely. He was, um, you know, and uh, he kind of he kind of split the centre halves as well, uh, which is good of him. And I mean, he's only young, so he'll only learn the game. So uh, now, kudos to him. Yeah, keep an eye on him. Uh, Go United nine, Kerry FC one. Um, give me an error to name it. Scores Ed McCarthy with a hat trick, Walter two, Slevin, Lamboso, and Kate with two, Kelleher for Kerry. And I suppose Sean, um, you know. First of all, like it's a bit of a statement win for Galway, I think, to be honest. Score banging nine goals after winning games, but he had goal here and there, and that they managed to score a lot of goals, obviously, in this game. But also, um, tough one for Kerry to swallow, conceding nine goals like away from home. And if you look at the goals as well, the high line seemed to be a problem. It was very high, and it seemed a normal direct ball every time he's getting Galway through. And Kerry didn't seem to do anything to, to change that even tactically. You know, it's, I don't know if that's the way to go. I don't know. I'll get to Keaton in a minute because Kerry played against Bray, what they were like against Bray in that way. But um, brilliant for Galway, but very disappointing for Kerry. And you hope to think that we don't see too many scorelines like that this season at Bob and Kerry. Yeah, well, to be fair to Kerry, I think a few of those goals were from inside the square. So we'll have to have a look at that. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was really, really bad. Billy Dennehy came out in the pe- in the post match uh, presser and said that uh, they tried to be too attacking, and I think that was right. That, that that's why they played such a high line, particularly when they went one goal down so early on. Yeah. Um, it, Ryan Kelleher's goal actually was quite good. I I think he should have been picked up for it, but I, he he took his header very well. Yeah. And I think if it had ended six one, it would have been one thing. But to concede nine goals in a game is really damaging. I mean. Everybody knew Kerry going into the season might pick up a few hammerings off the bigger teams, but nine uh, one is really, I mean, it's concerning. Like the coach, the, the, there's not, it's not time to hit the panic button yet. But coaches and players will be looking at themselves and saying, you know, something needs to change here. Um, I think that's what Denny he did. He came out and sort of took most of the blame for it, which is, you know, good on him. He's doing his job. Um, it is very disappointing for him. Now Galway were very clinical and probably deserve if 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 you can some people said they shouldn't have done it like if you're good enough to win by that amount you go out and you score as many as you can oh absolutely but, yeah but um uh yeah some of the goals were really soft from Kerry uh the seventh one in particular like it was, ugh, yeah. it was terrible yeah. I mean it it's uh you know they just um as Kerry fans have said like that's all you can really do as a fan is just you know gear up try and get Try and steady the ship against Wexford, even get a draw. Mm. Keep, keep even get a draw, like because they're capable of getting a draw against them. But um, mm. it's going to be a real test of character for a lot of those young players out there who have, maybe haven't been on the receiving end of such a hammer and like that. Yeah, Keith. I mean, in that scenario, when you conceded a couple of goals um, early on against a team like Galway, should you change it and 
play a bit of damage limitation because they definitely didn't play damage limitation. Kerry, they kept playing the same way. The high line was really high and Galway really exposed the kind of down, down the flanks and through the middle for that matter. And at times it was too easy and, you know, Borden could have scored a goal and he just himself that she played it through to, to Francie Lamboto, for example. And it's very computer game-esque, some of those goals, let's say. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think uh, you, you just kind of have to shut up shop. I think it was, was a 5 nil at halftime. I, I mean, if if you're looking to play the same way over and over again, people are going or teams are going to identify the weaknesses in your team. And, you know, there's not a lot you can say about this game. Look, Kerry are new to the league. Galway have been in the first division for three years now. So, and they were obviously favourites on the night, you know. To score nine goals in any game is is fantastic yeah. uh, return, but um and uh, it's good for Galway for Lomboto to get off get off the mark as well. You know he had that terrible injury a couple of years ago, yeah. and Stephen Walsh obviously got two. Ed McCarthy and then Kate has scored two as well. So like a lot of their attacking players are scoring, which is good for John Caulfield. You know instead of relying on the centre half or whatever to get the odd goal, well, and we still have the centre half getting in there with a header of course as well. So that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had to, didn't he? Yeah. But like, you know, for for Galway, Galway fans would be delighted. You know, goal difference, you know, the plus eight in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Kerry, um, you know, they just have to lick their wounds and go again. Um, I'm sure Billy Dennehy will try and identify the, what happened in the game. You know, analyze what happened in the game. But um, you know, it's 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 tough going for Kerry. You know, there's, I as a brave fan, I've been on the receiving end of an eight-one uh, defeat. Um, in Dundalk a few years ago so I know what it's like so uh, Kerry fans don't be too disheartened like he's will be back he's will threaten some teams and uh, four games into the season you know it's it's early days yeah yeah great start for Galway over all those four wins on the bounce um, in Limerick it finished 3-0 Cove Rappers 3 Warrow Doherty with 2 all in the last half an hour of the game and I suppose Sean Treaty no win, still on one point, left with Kerry. Obviously, he had a goal difference. Only scored one goal in four games as well. And Cole, fantastic start for them. Three wins, one draw, seven goals scored, one against. And um, yeah, like what can you say? It really is a fantastic start for Cole. And uh, it might surprise a few this season. Long way to go, but so far, they've been brilliant. And, uh, you know, Gavin's always talking about Jack Doherty, but one or two goals for him. And it looked like, I don't know, it could be wrong, because I've only seen the highlights. It looked like he was almost playing a centre forward position the way the balls were played through them. And he took the goals very well. Um, yeah, brilliant for Cole. Yeah, he was playing very high high up the pitch, yeah. all right. He seemed like the last man on the way through, didn't he? Yeah, maybe it was a tactical adjustment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you never point. know. That could have, that could have, I mean, he did score two goals, so maybe they identified a weakness in, in the treaty back line. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's another another win and another fantastic win. I mean, to win three 0 on the road is fantastic. Uh, they were good value for the win as well. Two the two goals that Jack Doherty got too, um, uh, were great. I mean, to be fair, now the three were careless in possession for two of those goals. It was a, a case of Ender Curran getting caught for the first one, and O'Donnell getting caught for the second one, yeah. and uh, it was a quick reversal of play, and then Jack Doherty was in, but um. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, Shane Keegan, he's had a, he's had a few uh, jobs in the other way that haven't worked out, but this one looks like it's working out. He's got Fran Rocket there as well as one of the coaches there with him, and we know about him here. I mean, he was very highly rated here, disappointed when he went, but um, you know, they've got a very good setup there, and they play and again, like you know, none of those goals. Well, the first one was a bit scrappy, but they're they're always trying to play football. That's what I always see on the highlights. And that's uh, really good to see. And especially, you know, anyone can try and play football, but, you know, to be able to do it with players like Jack Doherty and having a striker like Wilson Moware, uh, it's shown for Cove now as paying dividends. Yeah, exactly. The problem in players, Keith, that I suppose surprised a lot of people and the fact that they hit the ground running is a great start for them. But from Treaty's point of view, um, they've overachieved big time in the last few seasons. Um, has the time come where they're maybe struggling to keep up with that now? Uh, we we said a few weeks ago, Keith. It's it's a lot. The the division seems a lot stronger this year. Um, in a sense that there seems to be more teams uh, capable of beating other teams. You know, so whereas before you had Shelburne, um, kind of running away with the league and uh, Cork as well. Yeah, but like this season, you have Waterford and Galway are probably going to be the top two. But you have your Cove. So anyone from from tour down to eight are probably going to uh, threaten the playoffs. So. 
Um, I think Treaty would be a little bit uh, frustrated. Uh, I think the first goal was offside. Um, I'm not sure who the right winger was to put the ball into the box, but it then came back to him um, via deflection. He was off the pitch, came back onto the pitch. I thought it was offside. Um, I mean, it's in around the 68, 70th minute, so it was it was fairly late on the game, and then obviously heads went down after that. And Jack Doherty scored two good goals. But you're right, Treaty probably have overachieved in the last couple of years. And, you know, a point after four games, they're only ahead of Kerry on goal difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, disappointing for Treaty fans. And, um, I mean, Tommy Barry, he hasn't become a bad coach overnight. You know, he is he is a good coach. I mean, maybe they're missing. Uh, I know Sean mentioned a few weeks ago, Ryan Connolly came in and then he had to leave because of work commitments. He would have been a good signing for them. Okay. Um, and, and and Jack Lynch has obviously has, has left as well. So, you know, they've lost a few key players from the last few seasons. So, um, yeah, a little bit disappointing. But again, uh, Treaty just have to lick their wounds and go again. Yeah, I think the problem is when you overachieve at a club like Treaty a lot of the time, after two seasons, they've done it it can kind of come to a halt very quickly. Like, you know, it can go from one extreme to the other. And it's still early in the season, but I did say a few weeks ago, creating chances, I think, would be a problem for them this season. And that seems to be the case, doesn't it, Keith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, you know, the... I said it already, you don't have your coves latching on to you. You're latching on to your coves as such. Um, so, you know... And the current has been so good for for Treaty since he came came yeah. into the club, and he just seems he doesn't seem to have the um the 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 supply chain there um anymore, and which is disappointing. So you know, I mean, if he if he gets one or two goals, you know, and and, and gets on a little run, maybe Treaty it'll fire him up the table, but um. So disappointing. I was I was expecting I was expecting a cove win on, on Friday um because they've started so well, but uh Treaty will just have to um again analyze what went wrong and uh but they will be frustrated with the first goal. I think it was offside. Yeah, possibility to be fair. Uh Sean, finishing half sale, Wexford FC nail and Harps is still waiting on their first win of the season and again something I highlighted a few weeks ago as well that Different to see where the goals are going to come from. I think one of their goals this season was a penalty as well, and uh, you know they're they're finding it difficult. To, look, they're trying to adjust to a new division. They're trying to adjust to a new squad, a new manager, and it's not a bad result against Wexford. But obviously, you know, the longer they go without without winning, the more disappointing it is for them. To be fair. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it it was a low quality game. Uh, to be fair, Wexford were happy with the point, which to be fair, you can, you can't blame them for. It's a long trip up there. They haven't had the start of the season that they would have liked. And, um, you know, any point on the board, you know, you've, you haven't lost. You've kept a clean sheet. It's more positive for Wexford than it is for Finn Harps by a good distance. The only, I mean, if the highlights are to be believed, the only real chance Wexford had was like a half chance, really. It was a, a, a comfortable header in the end from Ethan Boyle. Um, but, um, yeah, it. I, I would say that... Um, the, you know, time is running out for Dave Rogers to get his first win as Harris manager. I think this would have been an opportunity for them, all right, because mm. you know, look, a, a draw is probably a fair result given uh, given the quality between the two teams. But you think that Harps have to capitalize on that home advantage? No one's going to like going up there, and you'd have to you'd have to take those home games and look at them as opportunities to win. And um, you know, it's it's. I think I would have liked to have seen a bit more progress at this stage of the season from Harps. Yeah, three other games so far have been at home as well, and obviously the failed to win. Um, Keith, yeah, from Wexford's point of view, decent point? Yeah, I said Bray's point last week there. Last week at Harps was a decent point. Um, given given the state of the pitch, I think I don't think any team can go up there and play football on the ground, you know, so uh, you have to play the ball in the air a lot more. Um. Look, Wexford haven't had the start they expected that yeah. that other other people expected. I know we kind of uh, talked them up at the start of the season. Um, I mean, but they've beaten Longford and they've gone up to Harps and like they're where are they sit in uh, sixth or something. I think. Yeah, well, so, four point, yeah, the four points for six, but four points in four games are just average, isn't it? The only, the only, um, the only worry that I'd have is that the Amo hasn't really got going. Um, for them, uh, so they'd be hoping to get him goals. Um, but 
I mean, yeah, as Sean said, probably they'll be happy enough with a point up in Harps given given the state of the pitch and stuff. And, you know, it's it's a good four hour uh, trip up and four hour back, you know. So um it's a long old it's a long old place to uh, to get to. So but like James Teddy, uh he look at it and he'll probably say a decent point um uh, in the long run. Yeah, we'll get on to the predictions for next weekend and uh to be honest, there's going to be some atmosphere down in Cove when they take on Galway. Cove are second in the league. Galway are top. There's an opportunity for Cove to go top of the league. So um, I'm sure there'll be a massive crowd at this one, Sean. Have you seen that one? Uh, sorry, you timed out on me there. Cove and Galway, where are you going for? Who do you think is going to win that one? How do you see that one going? Oh, that'll be... Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's two very different teams anyway. Uh, you know, you've got Cove... Uh, Cove definitely are more of a football playing team, but Galway, uh, you know, their physicality is a match for anyone in this division. So um uh, they did Cove actually got um they got a result there last the season against Galway. It was there there was that free goal. Yeah. Uh yeah. score from about the halfway line. Remember that. Uh, uh it's really tough to say. I mean Cove are going well, but this is definitely their biggest challenge yet. Uh I I it'd be interesting to see how they cope. With Galway because Galway are not an easy team to play, play against. They really they frustrate them. So um, I I think um, you know Cove will. You're right that there'll be a good crowd down in, in Coles Park and that um, I think Cove can use that to their advantage. I think they could get a draw out of this. I think it could be a one-one draw. Cove might not. Cove might have to um, settle for playing football a little less of the standard that they're used to. Maybe passing around a bit less. And um, being a bit more defensive, but um, I think they could get a draw out of this one. I think a one-one uh, would be a fair result. Yeah, Keith. To be fair, Cole, I don't think they need to be nervous going into this one. They should be embracing it. In fact, like you know what I mean? It's a you know home game against Galway, top of the league. As I said, a chance for Cole to go top. They should be embracing this challenge, really, shouldn't they? They're not. I mean, at the same time, you feel like they're not to lose because most of them expect Galway to win. Yeah, if you can get the crowd behind them, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, if they if they can become the twelfth man uh, for Cove, and I think I think what's crucial for Cove is um, against the Galway side, a big Galway side. Like you have some big players in that mm-hmm. team, uh, the likes of Hurley and Walsh, and you know, play the ball on the deck. You know, try and try and play around Galway if you can. Um, also try not give set pieces, free kicks and stuff, silly free kicks away and stuff. I know corners can be awkward, but. You know, that's a big weapon for Galway, as you know. Yeah, and if Cove can get Jack Doherty on the ball uh, a little bit more um, and, and he can open up the, the Galway defence, um, I still think Galway will get a result down here. I think I just think they're they're going to be too strong and, yeah. you know, um, they're on the back of a 9-1 um, battering of Kerry. So, like, I mean, I'm going to go 2-1 Galway. I think it'll be a tight game, but I think Galway will get a result. Do you give a prediction, Sean? I uh, yeah, one one. One one. I'll go for a draw as well. One all draw as well. Wexler take on Kerry FC, and obviously Wexler have been inconsistent so far. Um, but in a way, it'd be big pressure on them going into this game, having, in a sense, having Kerry been beaten nine one by Galway. You get the feeling that Wexler get an early goal, they might be all right, but they don't. There might be a bit of panic there showing as well. And obviously, Kerry would be interested to see what their approach is after that goal would be. Yeah, I mean, nobody now after that, nobody is going to want to lose to Kerry. But law of averages says somebody has to lose to them eventually. But so um, it it's going to be it's going to be tough. I mean, I think Kerry are going to have to adopt a more defensive approach to all of their games in order even just to get confidence back up to where it was before. Uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be a bit sad, all right, to see them do that. But uh, they've got to do what they've got to do. Um. I mean, I think if they could get a nil-all draw here, it'd be a great result. Wexford, the only thing you would say is that Wexford haven't really... They they, you know, they did against that loan, all right. They opened them up, but they haven't done it with consistency this season. So you would say that about them. I don't think... I don't think they get beaten 9-1 again, Kerry. I, I think if that happens, you might as well say goodbye. But um, uh, if... if But um, I think... um. I think I'll go with Nil all. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll give Kevin mm-hmm. Carey the ball. Keith, your thoughts on this picture? <laughs> uh, Wexford at home, obviously. Um, Wexford at home, aren't they? Yeah, very, very, very. 
sorry. Um, I mean, they had to get back to winning ways. Um, obviously, they bet Atlone a few weeks ago. Um, and people were a little bit surprised with that result, given the, the how Atlone had started. So, mm. um, I think I think this is the game Eddie Amo kind of kick starts this season. Um, I mean, if if James Keddy has any sense, he'll look at the Galway game and he'll look at how Kerry played with the high line and he'll try and dominate that. Um, I mean, Wexford have the players there uh, that can punish you. You know, you, you've your likes of Aaron Dobbs and uh, Adi Emma, who I've already mentioned, Aaron Robinson as well. So, I mean, it, it's going to be hard for Kerry uh, every game this season. I think whoever they come up against, um, they're going to be the underdogs. But I think I'm going to go for a 3 0 uh, Wexford win here. Yeah, I'll go with something like that as well. 3 0 to, to Wexford, I think, as well. Athlone and Treaty, and obviously Athlone have stuttered in the last couple of games after having the great first two games of Treaty. We talked about them before, but Sean, how do you see this one? Uh, it's it's tough to say. I mean, you you, th- you think Treaty are going to get off the mark eventually, but um, I don't know. They've it, it's it's hard to say because they like Tommy Barrett as a manager, and they still have a lot of the players that were pivotal to their success last season. But I think Athlone have shown more in flashes than Treaty have shown at any point mm. uh, during the season. Um, it's going to, I mean, every game is going to be tough for Treaty now at this stage. And um, the only thing that goes for them is that Athlone are in a bit of a slump at the moment. And this sort of thing tends to happen to Athlone. It's happened a couple of seasons that they've sort of, um, uh, they've had a good start and then they've faltered. Um, I think I'm going to have to give Athlone the edge in this contest though with players like uh, Franz Piero they have some players that they can rely on to uh, get the business done. And um, I don't see that with Treaty. Ender Curran, as you said, he's not getting the service that he needed last season. He, I don't think he has the ability to put the team on his back like that. So I think I'll go for 2-1 to Athlone. Keith, how are you saying it? Uh, listen, I think I think Athlone, the pitch might suit Athlone. You know, they, they're used to it, the home pitch. And... Um, you know, Treaty struggling a little bit, uh, as Sean said. Uh, Endicorn needs a service; he's not getting at the moment. So, uh, I'm just gonna scrape it. A two, a, a t- I'm gonna go with two one Athlone. I think it'll be tight again. Um, but I think Athlone because they've won two games already this season, and it's it's almost like desperation for Treaty. They're trying to get that first win of the season, and then um, Athlone might open them up. Mm-hmm. I actually think Treaty might nick it 1-0 to be honest with you I think if they keep it tight at the back they'll still be pretty decent defensively apart from that late show against Cove and I think they might go back to that against Athlone I think they might nick this 1-0 and get the first win uh, on Saturday then we'll start with Longford and Finn Harps both teams on I was going to say no Longford are 3 Finn Harps on 2 but both teams haven't won yet it's very difficult Sean to see many goals in this game I mean if someone gets one they probably win it do, do, do something <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, if, if someone gets a goal here, it'd be like a reason. I'd be shocked if any of the sides get more than a goal. You know? yeah, it'd, be, it'd be a reason to throw a parade in, in Letter Kenny or Longford or wherever, whoever gets the goal. <laughs> the but, day um, after Patrick's Day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, it's it's really hard to see this being anything other than a nil all, really. I mean, it's just got that written all over it. I mean, no, no, you're saying that it's going to be a really high score and an entertaining game, but um, oh man, I, I don't, I don't, I think this is going to be a terrible game to watch. I think lots of defensive football, maybe a few long balls over the top. The odd moment, many uh, players capable of scoring goals either, like so, you know. No, like, no. Keith mentioned Jamal Ibrahim, who's scored against us actually, yeah. and he's he, he 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 might do it, but mm-hmm. other than that, I don't really see anybody. Uh, really uh, threatening goal that much. Mm. So, what, what are your prediction you're going for, John? Draw uh, nil all. Oh, Keith. Um, yeah, it's just like Treaty. Both teams are kind of desperate for a win, aren't they? So, I mean, it, it could be an open game. Uh, I'm going to go with a three all draw here. <laughs> really? I'm not yeah. going to the bookies for that one. Um, I think. I think it's going to. I I, I just think uh, both teams will get chances, yeah. and I think um, yeah, three all. I, I just I just see a three all draw. Just something's popping in my head. I certainly don't. I think Longford might make this one nil, but it could go either way. It could be nil all. John says, "Well, go for 
home advantage in Longford to win this one. Finally, Waterford and Bray, which is actually a pretty big game as well. Bray in third, Waterford in fourth. Um, Bray unbeaten. Uh, both have the same goal difference, scored five, conceded two. Um, I'll start off with you, we'll keep, keep with this one. Do you see this as a big test for Bray? You know, Waterford haven't been playing very well, but to their credentials, let's say, of possibly challenging, is this a massive test? Yeah, it's probably Bray's biggest game of the season so far, and uh, it'll um, it'll say a lot about how how far Bray have come under Ian Ryan. Um, I mean, as I said in the in the review, uh, let's hope Chris Lyons is back. I mean, Bray missed him uh, up front the other night, holding the ball up, bringing other players into play, you know, and Jer Short obviously on the wing. So, um, it's it's going to be tough. Uh, I mean, Bray have gone. This season, we, 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 most most of the players playing at the back have, have played um, consecutive games. Um, I mean, Dane Massey probably would do a job with a with a lower uh, Premier Division team. Still, I think, I think yeah. he's um, I think he's a fantastic signer for Bray this season, and um, he's bringing the young lads along with him um, that are playing. I mean, Cole looks like a seasoned pro. He really does. I mean, nothing really gets by him, and but he is going to have a big test. Uh, I mean. I'm not sure how Waterford are going to go, Sean, but um, if he's up against a Lua, he'll definitely match a Lua for pace. Um, Wasim obviously has the strength as well. So, I mean, Waterford will have a tough game. Um, this is no given for Waterford, but going down there as a Bray fan, I'd probably take a, a draw. I'd probably take a, a draw because, you know, Waterford are obviously going to be up there at the end of the season. So, um, I'm going to go for a one all draw. I think, I think it'd be tight. Yeah, I mean, Sean... Waterford lost at home to Galway in the last, obviously, the last home game, the RSC. It wouldn't be good if they were beating at home to Cray, would it now? Consecutively. Sean! I mean, it'd be a disaster if, if, if it was a loss. Um, I'm not, not going not gonna to predict. I'm not going to predict that um, it will be. I think it'll be a draw. But I, I don't I think it would be a huge effort, or something would have to change drastically, if we did win. Um, I, I the the trouble is funny enough. They said that they were going to overload on attacking players heading into the season, but defensively we've been pretty solid. Mm. Um, and then going forward we've been really really poor. We've been anemic going forward. I mean, I I I thought Thomas Lua uh deserved to start there after the Galway game. But uh, he was very poor against Athlone. I don't know whether that was the case with the Boo Boys getting to him up at his old club. But um, I mean, he was he, he was quite poor. Um, yeah, and, uh, was yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ronan Cochran was the best of the front three. Um, I would expect to see him back in the starting eleven. He might be our best chance of a goal in this game. Um, if Shane or Shane Griffin could get another free kick. Uh, but um, you know, I don't see us scoring very many goals. And I think Bray have that going forward. I think Bray have more, Bray are more well-rounded team, and we might struggle to deal with that. Uh, so I think this game has a draw written all over it. I don't think fans will be happy with a draw, but I think that's you know for a prediction for an honest prediction, that's going to have to go one all. I think if it is a draw, Keith, um, I think Galway are hot favourites then for the league because oh, I think yeah. Waterford, Waterford be winning behind them then six points behind them or more. Yeah. So I mean. Like if it's a draw, like definitely, uh, uh Danny Sarah will be under severe pressure. Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, quickly there, you see how last year went and Cork starting so well as well, and uh, you know that gave them the edge throughout the whole season. In the end, it was the same with Shelburne. I think the year before, God, we were to do that at the start. It's very difficult, I think, to see them caught but not to be fair as well. So, be interesting. I think Waterford might pinch this one one nil, but it's going to be very, very tight. Look, lads, thanks for coming on. Guys at home, let us know what you think in the comments. Subscribe, hit your bell notification button. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a few predictions for next weekend as well. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See you guys. Cheers.